Good morning, Joshua. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. I guess I should start off by saying, is this the AI, Joshua, or is this really you? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's really me. I'd love to, I'd love to have an AI uh, version of myself that I could just throw into an interview. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. I mean, well, look at what Paul McCartney is doing with John Lennon. I cannot wait to hear this song. I want to know what he's done. Oh, they, wait, no, he's not doing an AI John Lennon, is he? Yes, yes, that, that's, um, that was the news all last week that they have finally completed this song that John Lennon once put on a cassette tape, and now they've mastered it, and it's really John Lennon. Wow, okay, interesting. I was, in, I was out of the country, so I somehow missed that story, but uh, that will be interesting. Um, you know, Paul McCartney did a video pretty recently where he de-aged himself, where he was like a young Paul McCartney. Wow. So um, he clearly is embracing... The technology. Uh, the only question that really that I have is: Is the song any good? Yeah, if it was right. on a tape for that long. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it just one of the clunkers? That you know, the Beatles might have had a couple of clunkers we never heard. It's possible. <laughs> so many people are investing in AI technology, and one of them is Ryan Reynolds, which doesn't shock me because this guy is so ahead of the curve. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is uh, he's everywhere. Yeah, he's like got a phone company. He's got a tequila. He's Deadpool. Uh, now I guess he's an AI guy. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I think there's a there's a whole bunch of excitement around uh, this space. I think that we're in the early innings of something that's an explosive and transformative technology. I, you know, as a person who is who has used it, uh, spent some time talking to the people who create it, um, you know, studied it. I would say. It is absolutely one of the most important and transformative technologies that has happened in, in our lifetime. Um, but we are also really, really early into it. And so uh, a lot of people are kind of like imagining futures that uh, may or may not happen. Right. So there's a lot of noise out there right now. Do you look at yourself as being a mad scientist because of the things that you're investigating? Well, I certainly the mad part, I think, for sure, <laughs> the scientist part, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not classically trained, but I, I think, you know, there there is a uh, I mean, all of this, you know, my my career has been um, obviously in telling stories about technology and, mm -hmm. you know, building media organizations around it, and, you know, trying to figure out like how to talk about what the you know, what is coming uh, and what is already here to and to make people really understand its its importance and its place in, in culture. I think, um, and so in in that in doing that, you know, I feel having the exposure to it. Yeah, it, it, at times it's felt like you're in a lab, just you know, kind of with beakers blowing up in your face. Uh, but but you know, it's also to, to try to grab hold of it and understand it, and and then tell people about it is it, to me, it's like feels very natural to me. So um, it's been it's been super fun, but at times, absolutely confusing, absolutely. Uh, sort of blinding in its in its speed what what led you to the podcast what future because i mean i mean it, for, first of all it is so interesting to listen to when i'm cruising down these busy streets of charlotte <laughs> well um you know the uh it's it is good for driving it's yeah. great for great for if you're on a bike if you're in a car uh long i like i like to i think people should listen to when they're driving down an empty uh, highway Ooh. in the middle of the night i think Ooh. that's a uh, time to really immerse yourself in my uh in, in my my sounds but um you know i, I think look I, i've spent like i said i've just spent my career as a journalist and as a, as a creator trying to you know kind of tell these stories and and when we started talking about a podcast um and you know i've done them before but you know i was like what's the next thing you know where do we go next there's this whole question and it's not just about technology but it's about our entire reality it feels and, and frankly because it's through the lens of technology and the mirror of technology i think that Everything feels like it is just so splintered and so high velocity. And what I really wanted to try to do in my own, you know, maybe like you said, mad scientist way is like, can we talk about all this stuff in the context of of where we're headed and what it means, right? And so if we're talking about, you know, the financial markets or we're talking about politics or we're talking about, you know, AI, how do you put it in this through this lens of okay, okay, here's how we process this in our current reality and here's where that processing is headed so you know it's it's, it's it, that was an exciting way to do it i don't know if that makes sense maybe i sound uh, completely <laughs> off my rocker but but it's like i think there's just a new conversation to have about this stuff and it is like not so much like talking to the academics but talking to the people who are who are making and studying and creating and then trying to get them to explain like 
How does this work? Where is it going? See, you, you bring a sense of transparency to AI technology in the way that we better understand it. And the reason why is because right now we're pretty much being trained what an AI is through the... For whatever reason, and you know, read into this how, how you will, but there is a, a, a human inclination to, when confronted with AI in particular, but lots of new technologies, to go to doomsday scenarios and and to talk about the ways and, and, and the, you know the ways it can be misused or the ways it may decide to um, sort of abuse its creators. And I think you know to start with one like that's a very human idea. It's a very it's a very human idea that uh, this technology will wake up one day and want to destroy us. I think um, maybe it's because we've made uh, human beings have made such a habit of destroying each other. Um, we we think like naturally anything we create is going to be used for uh, some you know very dark uh, purposes. But I, I don't know that a machine would necessarily, if it were sentient or alive, which none of these AI uh, uh, programs are. Not none of the stuff that we see right now is is actually thinking. Right? It's it's doing a very high, a highly complex um, uh, process, but it is not what a human brain does when it thinks. And um, and there's a diff. There's an important difference there, right? So we're not there yet yeah. in terms of this technology even being as sophisticated as the stuff that's going to be in the new Mission Impossible movie or in the Terminator films. Not even by a long shot. But the real question then is to, to ask: Is you know it, when it if it ever gets there, what will the thing want to do? Yeah. Right. And and I think that we tend to go towards some pretty. Uh, pretty bad scenarios but i also think there's it's just as likely that um it, we will not be able to guess what it wants to do or what it thinks because we cannot perceive of or conceive of how that mind would work and so there's a lot of unknowns there I, does that fill me with fear not so much i mean you can still unplug it i mean it can still just be turned off like we're it's not this inevitable thing that will exist forever. It's like we still have a lot of control over where the technology goes. I, I got to tell you, Joshua, the uh, the astronauts laugh at me when I bring up AI technology because I, I keep telling them that um, it, it'll be the AI that'll step on Mars. And they laugh at that because in their heart, they're convinced, no, it'll be man that'll step on Mars first. <laughs> I mean, you think about all the times you've tried to watch a movie on Netflix and it like it just won't load. There's an error. It buffers and weird or your Internet goes out or whatever. I mean, we it's funny. We talk about technology like it's this incredibly infallible yeah. thing that once you create like, oh, everything's a calculator, right? Like, oh, if I need to know a math problem, I can punch it into a calculator and the calculator will give me the perfect answer. Well, you know, before there was a calculator, there was an abacus and, and that was not technology. It's a basic idea. But like the idea that uh, if you think about all of the times your computer, your phone drives you crazy, mm -hmm. now apply that to like getting to Mars and going and exploring the planet, right? There's a million and one things that can and will go wrong. I think the human element, I, th I think we're, we're never going to be able to count out the human element. Um, uh, the, the, we don't even know how the human brain fully works yet. Right. The idea that we think we're going to have a, a brain that is superior to that in a machine is, is sort of an interesting uh, idea that, frankly, is being pushed by a lot of people who have a financial stake in convincing you they're creating the perfect you know, computer brain. Um, I, I think you're right, though. I think the astronauts will, will walk on Mars. I do not think it will be like a Terminator um, <laughs> in, all likely, in all likelihood. I, I think we're just... People just are like, you know, it's fun to think about, but um, we we have a long way to go. I mean, you know, the batteries on these like, you know, on, on like a very advanced like Boston Dynamics robot can only last for half an hour or something. Oh, so, true. you know, how are they getting – how are they going to – there's ways to do it. I think we're just a, we're far off from that. You know, you are so absolutely right about that, even with Tesla. I mean, I mean, the, you can only go so far in a battery-operated car. Yeah. Oh, I mean, also autopilot. I mean, yeah. Tesla has been touting this. And, and I say this is a guy who has a Tesla and never turns it on because I'm terrified of what it does. It is it has caused a ton of crashes. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is a really, really uh, 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 an error prone piece of software. And that's just driving around on roads on planet Earth. You wow. know, uh, <laughs> it's 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 we're so so far away from the stuff that you hear like some of these guys talking about in the AI world, you know, that they're going to suddenly have Skynet and it's going to start a nuclear war. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. We're just, we're not even in the, we're not even in the beginning of that game. <laughs> so what's more mysterious, cryptocurrency or, or an AI? 
<laughs> well, cri- crypto is, uh, I think there's a lot of mystery about it because it's very hard to explain or understand. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and even the, it, the deeper you go, the less you seem to understand about it. Like, um, I mean, you know, there's, it's funny, but there's an interview with Mark Andreessen where somebody asked him to explain, you know, he's, you know, one of the greatest, you know, minds in technology, huge investor in the crypto space. Somebody asked him to explain why it was why why people needed cryptocurrency or why people needed these um sort of ledger systems that exist that are you know sort of what the blockchain stuff is and he really struggled with an answer you know and i think like if you're pumping billions of dollars into it and you're a technology genius and you can't really give someone a good clear answer we might need to spend a little bit more time figuring it out you know i think i think we're just like everything now we're just rushing into it yes people are excited about it it has some potential in the short term, but what is the long term upside? We don't know yet. So it's it's we're in a process of exploration right now. Dude, I was there when Pong came out, and I thought that was the greatest invention on the face of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people I think about this all the time when I was playing like my NES and a new game would come out and you'd be like, These graphics are so realistic. Like I feel like I'm there. And it's like you look at the graphics and it's like four colors. Yeah. <laughs> uh and, and super pixelated. And and you know, when I there's I every step of the way that these these moments happen where people are like, It's never gonna be, get better than this. Go back and watch the first Toy Story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at how you will laugh at how bad the animation looks. You will laugh at how how uh, just like first generation it looks. And like, you know, that was the best of the best at its time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this stuff is there's so many advancements coming that we have yet to even uh, process or understand or think about. Like we're we're, we're in the very, I've said this a million times. I said maybe I'm a broken record. I just think we're in the earliest stages of living with and working with all this technology we don't we're not at the end state we're at the beginning state right like the iphone's only been around for i don't know 12 years or something it's not very much time and and in that time it's already evolved to new things and to new ways of you know of how we use it so and that's just that's just one small part of of this puzzle so i i like to i always like to just kind of um remind myself that uh we are we have not figured all of this out and so we're the, the thing we best thing we can do right now is learn and try to understand and navigate um you know the the how how we are supposed to live with these devices man if you could only hear these conversations i'm having with these singer songwriters who are horrified of the ai because they're horrified that it's going to steal their voice or steal their style of sound yeah well it will Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it's it's I mean, people are already doing it. There's this AI Drake song that, you know, went on Spotify and, and people were like, hey, this is pretty good. It's like the music was created by a human, but the voice was an AI version of Drake. Or, I mean, AI is not the right. It was a you know digital re- repli- replication of his voice, yeah. um, you know, using uh, taking it was a deep fake, essentially. Right. Taking his voice and then modeling a, a, a program, you know, that could that could speak it back. But. People thought it was real and people liked it. They were like, this song's pretty good, actually, this new Drake track. Um, I think there's going to be an explosion of that happening. I think the biggest uh, targets are going to be people like that who are huge stars. And, and, and frankly, part of our job, and this is where I always, you know, where I, sort of what I was just saying is our job as human beings is to learn, to, to figure, to understand the differences between the real thing and the fake thing. Um, there are plenty of signals if you, if you pay attention to pick up on and uh, so, so how do you, you know, we have to learn a literacy around this that is essentially like researching before you decide it's the real thing, like looking into it a little bit. And, you know, that is sort of a layer of, of, of life that we've never had before. But I think um, because of what technology is capable of, it, it sort of forces us to, um, become, to become different listeners and watchers and readers. And so, you know, we have a bit of a challenge over the next few years to to, to make sure we've got tools and skill sets to be able to do that. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, we, we were both there when when Cher released Believe, and we thought it was the coolest darn sound on the face of the planet, and then everybody started using it, and the human ears started going, uh-uh, 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 I don't like this sound. Right. Well, you know what's funny about autotune is it was originally used to correct 
in subtle ways. I mean, I, I, I used to produce music. So I remember the early days of autotune and you'd use it like somebody came in the studio and they, they were a terrible singer and you'd like, well, yeah, I can actually fix this. I can make yeah. them sound like they sing on key. Now it's used like that still all over the place. But then it became an effect. The, the overuse of it became of an effect that now is like a vocal style that you hear. Yeah. And, and what, you don't, what you don't think about that much or care about that much at this point is the way it's used subtly to correct people's vocals. I will say, however, if you listen to like, you know, the Eagles harmonizing in the 70s versus like, a, you know, a Disney pop record right now, there are noticeable differences yep. Yep. in the quality of the sound. And, and I would say, you know, the human element that has been taken out is is it's it's real and it's noticeable. And I think you're not, you know, 99 percent of the of the audience may not care. But I do think there is going to be, uh, there may be, in some day, a return to an appreciation for the more the more things are faked, the more the real things yep. are valuable. Yep. And so I think um, there could potentially be a, you know, there's a generation coming after us that will think it's just so uncool to use any effects <laughs> on vocals. Or it's, I mean, I'm telling you, there's going to be a generation not too far off that's like social media is so dumb and so yep. lame, and yep. nobody, nobody wants to use it. Or like streaming music is over. We only listen to vinyl. Like. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, vinyl sales are way up right now. So I think we, you never know like what the cycle is going to look like. I think culture can turn on a dime and, and it really is about like how people come to this stuff, not just about what the machines do. You're so right because my 17 year old grandson wants all my vinyl and all my CDs. He wants them all. And I keep looking at him going, but you've got it all. It's called streaming. No, 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 no. I want the stuff right. you've got. No, people are like, oh, what did, wouldn't it be cool to like listen to a whole album not on Spotify? Yeah. You know, it's such an it's a novel idea. You know, my my wife runs a bookstore, and we have these. You know, they you know the little paperbacks, the kind the pulp paperbacks oh, yeah. that you and I probably grew up with. Well, those are rare now. Those are actually like a not the normal books that are sold. A normal paperback is larger. When teenagers come in the store, we have a rack of those little paperbacks. <laughs> They're like, oh, my God, look at these tiny books. These are so crazy. And they think it's like the most novel thing, no pun intended, the most novel thing in the world. And I think like I, that's how I want to I want to think about the future kind of through those eyes. Like we the things we take for granted or that we've already dismissed may be a treasure trove for a generation yeah. that we can't imagine yet. So, you know, I'm not writing off uh, I'm not writing off the, the, the good old stuff just yet. <laughs> Joshua, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I mean, I, I would love to. I'm loving this conversation. Like I I, I, lo I love to talk about, you know, this is the thing this is and this is why, you know, I wanted to do the podcast that, you know, my podcast is to get into the the levels below what you hear in the headlines, the stuff that like, you know what I mean? The headlines are just so full of it. I mean, it's just all, but funny, funnily enough, the headlines you see are, are tuned to uh, uh, be ranked high in Google search or to show up and make you click on social media. Yeah. They are not a reflection of what these stories actually are. They're a reflection of trying to play the system. So you will click on the story. That's it. And I That's think, it. um, you know, I, I want to. I'd love to just have more conversations with people where you can say, "Okay, go one level below that. Go two levels below that." And it's not the thing that you think it is. Oh my God! Ah, oh, will you be brilliant today? Okay, <laughs> I I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> All right, bye, guy. Thanks, man. <laughs>